Hey guys, welcome back to today's video. Today is Friday, December 22nd, 2023, and just around two to three days ago, President Donald Trump made a major endorsement in the Ohio Senate race going into next year's primary. Now, this Ohio Senate race is one that the Republican Party has been targeting since the 2018 midterm elections, largely because Ohio, for all intents and purposes, is now a red state. They have one Republican senator, they have numerous Republican congressmen, they've had a Republican governor for a decade now, and they voted for Donald Trump by over eight points in both 2016 and 2020. And yet one Democrat in specific, the Democrat being the incumbent Senator Sherrod Brown, has been a stickler for Republicans for his inability to lose in the Senate races across this state. When Republicans see a red state where there is a Democratic senator, very obviously it goes immediately on their radar, and thus they start fielding extremely strong candidates from the very beginning. But that wasn't necessarily the case back in 2018, which ended up being the pitfall for many national Republicans. You see, the 2018 Senate elections were coinciding with an expectation that Democrats were going to obliterate Republicans in every competitive race. And while that was primarily true on the House level and in numerous cases on the governor level, the Senate level actually saw Republicans gain two seats on the overall net, giving them 53 to the Democrats' 47. And these victories came in red states, states that Donald Trump had won by pretty hefty margins, states like Indiana and Missouri and North Dakota, all states that Donald Trump had won by 15 points or more. But in the state of Florida was the real shocker, where incumbent Senator Bill Nelson, the Democrat, lost to the governor Rick Scott, a Republican, by 0.2%. A margin of 11,000 votes across over 8 million ballots cast, Democrats were defeated. But the Republicans saw this and realized that some other states may have otherwise been winnable. You see, all across the country, they tried to field strong candidates, but many people simply didn't want to run. And what we found to be the case in states where Republicans had lackluster candidates, like we have West Virginia with Patrick Morrissey, we have Matt Rosendale in Montana, and also Jim Renaki in the state of Ohio, or Renasi, I'm not entirely sure how to pronounce it, I probably should know because I covered this race six years ago, but... The Ohio Senate race was one where Republicans didn't really put up a strong candidate because they didn't feel as if Ohio was going to be within reach. And while the results show that Sherrod Brown did win by around six points, it still was very much within reach. And so six years later, the Republican Party looks at this state and says, we need to do things differently. They field a number of candidates for the 2024 race, including candidates that have already served in statewide official positions. For example, Frank LaRose, who currently serves as the Ohio Secretary of State. Matt Dolan, who serves as a state senator from the 24th District, who also ran for Senate back in 2022. And then another candidate here, Bernie Moreno, who is a former car dealership owner, the father-in-law of U.S. Representative Max Miller, and in this case, just simply a candidate. And so for a while... The expectation here was pretty considerate, uh, considerable that we would find that there was going to be a two-way race between the top two candidates, Matt Dolan and Frank LaRose, a state senator who was very well known across the state, and Frank LaRose, who of course was already serving in a statewide position. And so in this competitive race, we saw that initial polling had indicated this two-way race was actually going to happen. Only two candidates had consistently been in the top two for uh, and even beyond single digits. And also we found that Frank LaRose pretty consistently maintained a lead across the state of Ohio. He made a big name for himself during issue one, which was the vote on a constitutional right to abortion. But what we found was that as the time went on, it was clear that Bernie Moreno was much more involved with the Make America Great, Aw Great Again wing of the Republican Party. He received endorsements from people like J.D. Vance, Mike Lee, Marco Rubio, names that are recognizable amongst the MAGA circles that helped build his name recognition and build out his campaign. And with these endorsements came the most ultimate endorsement, which was the one from President Donald Trump. In a huge blow and huge defeat to the other Republicans running in this race, Donald Trump has now weighed into this race. But it's a decision that I don't think exactly strikes everybody as the right one. You see, Donald Trump endorsing Bernie Moreno is sort of as if the Republicans are choosing the worst possible candidate for 2024. I already listed off people who had already served in elected positions across the state, and yet Donald Trump chose the unelected one. 
And I think a lot of this has to do with what he enjoys about Bernie Moreno, the fact that he's a businessman. And in fact, we can take a look at what was said about him in this Truth Social post. Bernie Moreno, a highly respected businessman from the great state of Ohio, is the exactly type of MAGA fighter that we need in the United States Senate. That he would always stand up to the fascist nutjobs and the spinous rhinos and be the successful political outsider needed to defeat Sherrod Brown, who he calls a liberal career politician. In 2018, Republicans didn't run a political outsider. They ran practically a nobody who didn't even spend much time in the race, at least as much as he should have. But ultimately, Sherrod Brown won anyway. This time, Donald Trump sees it from a different angle. He wants to nominate someone who he sees as similar to himself, a candidate who was able to win in 2016 and 2020 and flip this state from what was when Obama, an Obama state in 2008 and 2012. But like I said, the Republicans have stronger candidates, and Bernie Moreno is certainly not the strongest, and by the data that we have right now, is in fact the weakest. Taking a look at where we are in terms of primary polling, Bernie Moreno has taken a lead even before Donald Trump's endorsement. But it was still a very close and competitive three-way race. But when you take a look at the general election, the numbers are a lot different. Sherrod Brown, the incumbent senator, faces off against Matt Dolan and Frank LaRose in polls. And in a lot of these, you see much more competitive races than if you just look down and see the polling between Sherrod Brown and Bernie Moreno. For instance, the most recent Emerson College poll that was taken right after the 2023 Issue 1 referendum that took place in the state of Ohio, Sherrod Brown was only defeating Matt Dolan by a margin of three points. Frank LaRose, who received a lot of negative press for his very, very close association with Issue 1, he received 36% to Sherrod Brown's 41%. So, so far, the margins here are a three-point advantage for the Democrats against Matt Dolan, a five-point advantage against Frank LaRose. But amongst the same electorate, you find that Sherrod Brown improves his number to 42%, and Bernie Moreno drops to 32%. And while this can be... You know, this can be explained partially by name ID, 100%. We do also have to recognize, too, that clearly there are reasons why Sherrod Brown is stronger against Bernie Moreno because Bernie Moreno has this history and has this association with him that labels him as more extreme in comparison to other candidates. Because what we know here, too, is that even if one poll might just be name ID, the consistent numbers that we see, the very, very real differences between the amount of support that Sherrod Brown gets when faced up against other Republicans and Sherrod Brown re receives faced up against Bernie Moreno is quite significant. Data for progress showed a tie between Brown and LaRose. He beats Bernie Moreno by three. You take a look at the number from Ohio Northern University, 48 to 26 against Bernie Moreno, 44 to 31 against Frank LaRose. And even Emerson College, which did a poll back in October, a better point in time, I would argue, for Republicans in Ohio, they found that Matt Dolan would defeat Sherrod Brown, Frank LaRose would defeat Sherrod Brown, but guess who would lose to him? Bernie Moreno. And so, that's why many people see this as a decision that makes this race more competitive. In fact, decisions being made recently from CN analysis, and I'm sure we will see ones to follow suit from other reputable uh, firms, maybe even getting beyond toss up here, moved their ratings. CN analysis moved it from a lean red state to toss up following this endorsement. We know what this endorsement means because we've seen it happen in elections prior. Take a look at 2022. Remember what happened when Donald Trump had the final say on all of these endorsements? Democrats were able to win in Pennsylvania, flip that seat from red to blue. Democrats were able to win in, in Georgia when the polls had indicated they were going to lose. Democrats were able to win in Arizona when the polls also indicated that they were going to lose. Democrats were able to win in Nevada in this state. Because Donald Trump was so closely associated with the GOP, you found that across the United States, his association with the Dobbs decision only ended up being a net negative for the GOP. You also found this to be the case in governor races as well, including Arizona, including Wisconsin, including Michigan, including Pennsylvania. All across the country, the impact and influence of Donald Trump served to the detriment in the general election of mainstream Republicans because the candidates he chose were far from strong. 2022 could have been a red wave year in the event that maybe they had somebody different in Pennsylvania, 
Even Dave McCormick, I think, would have done better than Dr. Oz. In Georgia, they could have had Doug Collins again, a Republican who Republican voters liked and would have backed had they not been swayed by the endorsement for Herschel Walker. In Arizona, it could have been somebody else besides Blake Masters, a stronger candidate across the state that could have won this competitive Senate race. I mean, there are so many ways we could have seen 2022 go, but it was a perfect storm for Democrats because of one common denominator, the same common denominator that is now influencing the 2024 Senate races that could very well result in the loss for the GOP in 2024. I think what Donald Trump thinks right now is that the 2024 Senate race in Ohio is a done deal. Because they will be running alongside the presidential ballot, he does not see any possible way that there would be enough crossover voters that you would see Republicans winning Ohio on the presidential and losing it on the Senate level. But things like that absolutely happen. Even taking a look at 2016, the first time that Donald Trump was elected in North Carolina, he won this state by 3.1% or 3.6%. It was a pretty significant margin, but Democrats were able to win the governor's race here. In Montana, another state that Republicans are targeting heavily in 2024, Donald Trump was able to win by 20 points across the state against Hillary Clinton. Guess what happens in the governor's race? The Democrat ends up winning by around five points. Cross-splitting doesn't happen as often as it used to, at least historically speaking, but it absolutely still happens. And it absolutely can happen when there are lackluster candidates on either side of the aisle. Even the state of Ohio is a perfect example of this. In 2016, we can take a look that Donald Trump won the state by around eight points against Hillary Clinton, but the former governor, Ted Strickland, the Democrat, ran such a poor campaign that he lost the race by roughly 20 points. I mean, it is such a substantial margin in comparison to the presidential, which Democrats would have even argued was a substantial margin. And so there are many circumstances, including in the state of Ohio, dating all the way back as recently as 2016, where cross-party voting absolutely happens and can and probably will, given that Bernie Moreno is by far the weakest candidate. And so I've told you a lot about why Bernie Moreno is at this point where we would call him, or not necessarily why, but that he is the weakest candidate based on the numbers, based off the data that we have right now. And there's a reason why these major political firms are shifting Ohio more in favor of Democrats. That's that thing. But the reasoning behind it is actually quite simple. The winning issue for Democrats that we saw to be extremely beneficial in 2022 was the issue of abortion. Would Republicans running for Senate, House, Governor back a statewide ban for the governorship or for the Senate and House a national ban? And in many cases, Republicans took the wrong stance. You see, abortion is not a winning issue. Take a look even at Ohio, a state that Donald Trump again won by eight points in back-to-back elections, and yet Ohio on issue one turned out to vote in favor of making an abortion not only legal, but a constitutional right, meaning that the state legislature cannot overturn it without every without super, super heavy lifting, which just simply isn't going to happen. Issue one election results show that this constitutional right to abortion is significant and important to voters in the state of Ohio. And while there is an argument to be made that because this is passed, it won't matter as much, it will matter when it comes down to what voters think should be done on the national level. This will no longer be an issue that governor candidates can run on, but it can be an issue and will be an issue for as long as there is Dobbs v. Jackson setting the precedent that Roe v. Wade is overturned. The same way Republicans campaigned on abortion for 50 continuous years, Democrats could very well replicate it and do the same exact thing. Because as long as there is the threat or the idea that a nationwide abortion ban can come into effect, that will be utilized in the congressional elections. And one of the most outspoken supporters of a national ban is Bernie Moreno in a way that he simply should not be taking, right? You take a look to even recently, he's trying to walk back his his stances. Well, why is he trying to walk it back? Well, it's because he said that he believes in a 15 week federal ban that would allow states to go even further should they choose and saying that there should be restrictions. He says there should be exclusions, uh, exceptions in this case for rape and incest and to save the life of a mother. And so that's something that people look at and say, okay, maybe, but a 15 week abortion ban, that's a non-starter for many Americans. And it's a non-starter, especially for swing state voters. And you can see that in Ohio issue one, this constitutional right to an abortion 
is to give people that ability to do it after 15 weeks. This is a clear display that voters in the state of Ohio very much agree that abortion should be legal. And we know that based on polling data, but we have the actual electoral results to back it up. And we may very well have electoral results to back it up again in 2024 when they vote against somebody like Bernie Moreno. And his issues and stances on abortion doesn't just end there. He misrepresented what Ohio Issue 1 would, de would do and saying that it would let a rapist to force a woman to get an abortion. He came under heavy fire for these comments, again, walking back because he knows and the Republican Party knows that there is no winning position on the issue of abortion that wins over voters in swing states on the national level, whatever it might be. They know this is their losing issue, one that Democrats are continuously sinking them in, sinking them in, sinking them in to a point where I look at it and say, there's no way that you can come out as heavily in support of this and be as strong of a candidate as if you would have been had you just kept your mouth shut. And I understand it. He has to speak on an issue. He's a Republican. He's pro-life. But that's not a popular position. Being pro-life is not where the majority of Americans are. Being pro-choice is. And so when you have a candidate like that who has made such excessive statements and such provocative ones specific to an issue that is so personal to many Americans, you turn off voters. And that's exactly what we're seeing happening in 2024. It also doesn't help, too, that Sherrod Brown is just popular. Sherrod Brown is in a good position because voters like him. They reelect him for a reason. This is not some type of fluke situation where it was a low turnout election. It was a high turnout election. Sherrod Brown won by six. And there are many cases, too where Sherrod Brown has outrun the national margin. In 2012, Sherrod Brown won by six points. You saw that Obama won the state by roughly three. And so you see that there is an improvement here. And while a three-point difference wouldn't be enough to outrun an eight-point victory of Donald Trump, I do believe that with a lackluster candidate, even types like J.D. Vance, who in 2022 encapsulated, encapsulated Donald Trump perfectly, this was the Ohio rendition of Donald Trump. He saw an underperformance compared to 2020. Because as I just said with the video about Ron DeSantis, you can't outdo the doer. And when you try to do that, voters see you as disingenuous and they drop you. Because voters make excuses for Donald Trump. They don't often make excuses for statewide candidates who they don't know or trust or even want to elect in the first place. What we are going to find in the state of Ohio is that this endorsement from Donald Trump has single-handedly put Democrats back on top, the favorites to win the Ohio Senate race as of right now. That Sherrod Brown could realistically come within a point or two of winning this race, could win it by a point or two, rather, in a race that otherwise might have been gone, that might have been too polarized, too unwilling to cross-party vote in a presidential election that is a lot more willing now. And I think Bernie Moreno is going to have to do a lot of damage control now that he is going to be in a very good spot for this nomination. And the general election will probably start a lot earlier than if Donald Trump had weighed out of the race. Maybe there would have been a possibility that another Republican would have been able to, one, enter in or two, win this race and performed better. Someone who actually has electoral experience. But I feel as if we are reaching a very similar point, a similar point to one that we saw back in 2022, when many of these Republicans, the Make America Great Again wing of the party was promising they're electable. They're going to win. We're going to get them there. Dr. Oz is going to win. Look at the polls. Herschel Walker is going to win. Look at the polls. Blake Master is going to win. Look at the polls. Trump is right. He's choosing the right candidates and he's choosing who's going to inspire the base the most. And then by the actual results, that simply wasn't the case. And so we will see a very similar thing happening. I think the Republican Party is very worried because they are seeing a very eerily reminiscent, uh, a very eerily reminiscent part, part of their primary process that remembers them or dates them all the way back to 2022, the early stages of the primary process, even December of 2021, when you saw the entrance into these races by people like Carrie Lake and Dr. Oz and Blake Masters and Herschel Walker and people who Republicans in their hearts knew at the RNC, at the NRSC, at the NRCC, knew were going to be losing candidates. But because Donald Trump endorsed them, they were the nominees. And that's exactly what the case is going to be here. Republicans are going to fight tooth and nail. They will and they have and they will. Uh, they will and they have. For this Senate race, 100%. There's no way they write it off just because Bernie Moreno is the nominee. But in the same way they did fight tooth and nail for Pennsylvania, Georgia, Arizona, Nevada, lost. That's probably going to be the case here if things continue at the way they're going. And Bernie Moreno doesn't do any type of major character uh, you know, change, any type of major uh, change of perception from the public in Ohio. I think there's a very clear way that we can see Democrats maintaining control of the U.S. Senate and that pathways through Ohio, which was just opened back up three days ago, with Donald Trump's endorsement for Bernie Moreno in the GOP primary. 
So thank you guys so much for watching this video. Make sure to comment down suggestions below. Subscribe on the left if you haven't already and check out the Instagram and Twitter. At the bottom left of the screen, there's also a Discord server if you go ahead and join. On the screen, there's a video you can watch and then a playlist for my 2024 Senate election analysis videos. Again, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you all later today.